Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan Lab. Alright, coming in with Green Leaf Season 4, Episode 4, A Common Enemy. Eh. Look, look, y'all gonna stop bucking with my Gigi. My Gigi can't catch a break. Nah. No matter what she tries to do, she always have opposition on every hand. Yeah, so when, she, when she would do good, evil, evil. is always present. <laughs> All right, so she does move fast. I remember on last episode, she told um, AJ, listen, I want you to come home. Well, AJ's home, baby. Yup. She's sitting there, and it looks like she got him a nice little studio apartment. And she's trying to get things set up for him. Got him a welcome mat and all of that. And AJ, he's over there cooking him some French toast and some chicken levels. I said, what you know? What you know about it, AJ? Where did you really grow up at? Because that's some country skin right there. Yeah, so one of your foster friends must have been black. <laughs> oh, but anywho. So um, he's looking at the welcome mat and he was like, you know, that ain't really my flow. And at this I mean, who gonna come visit me anyway? Don't nobody even know I'm here. Uh. And she was like, you know, I'm a... You know, come around and visit you and whatnot. And I'm like, this is, this sounds like it's, it sounded good in theory, but this boy is out here all alone now. He's, he's like, lonely. he's a prisoner to his apartment at yeah. this point. And I'm like, how is he getting around? Mm -hmm. Dude, like, is he catching? Oop, I'm, it's a lot. She more. bought him a 10 speed, man. So he riding around. All right. <laughs> or maybe a moped. So we see Sophia. Sophia flies into town from um, Hampton University and. She popped up at the um estate and Gigi was like, Didn't well, you just run off and tell me you ain't want me to go to school with you? You gonna get your daddy to drive y'all down and then y'all gonna go to Michael Kors and, and do all that skit in Virginia, you left me behind and why y'all gonna be standing Lynette? And then you back? <laughs> and she said, Yeah, I come to um see my brother. Gigi was like, So So y'all been she been said, talking. that's yeah. how I know he's here. Mm -hmm. I said, don't get smart. You know, I know you're mad at your mama, but uh -huh. so we need some respect. You, you still can get the you can still slap get the, 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 the skit out of you. Yeah. So she ended up going over there to see Zora, the weed explorer. And she told Zora a lie, said that she was going to see her ex-boyfriend. But really, she was going to see her brother. But Zora was expecting her to come back to help her with a sermon for the little saints. And I said, did I miss something? When did Zora start... Teaching the little saints. Now I know she agreed to do the to Bible up, study. Get up in the morning. So maybe that. Well, maybe they ain't doing. They ain't doing the little saints at five a.m. in the they morning. Not be. Yeah. So I said, well, she transitioning over. All right, let's run the family business. <laughs> so Sophia goes over there to see her brother AJ, and of course the initial exchange was a little awkward and whatnot. And the next thing we know, she got her glass of brown liquor. Not and just brown liquor. Hennessy. I said, when did Sophia start drinking liquor? Well, she <laughs> said that, you know, she's trying new experiences. And her and AJ are sitting back talking and whatnot. And he's having a conversation with her about the fact that um he graduated. <clears throat> and on his 18th birthday, his foster family was like, all right, I've done what I needed to do. You Sad. need to buck out. Sad. And he did drive something home, even for me, because I'm one of those people that I believe when you're 18, you need to get the buck out because I believe that as I'm parenting, I need to be preparing my child to get the buck out at 18. But he said he wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. and he didn't have anywhere to go. He didn't have anything to do. So at 18, he pretty much became homeless. And from this conversation, it seems like AJ was never adopted. He was just going from, from foster, foster family to foster family. Yeah. Because he had told Gigi that one of the foster family's um, husband had taught him how to cook. Mm -hmm. So I said, when he said one of, I said, okay, so he'd been passed around the system a lot. And that drives the true thing back home is that our black children do not get adopted. Yeah, they it's don't. sad. And it is sad. And, it's, and they, they do is very few. Yeah. So Sophia, <clears> she <throat> promised AJ, you know, that she was going to keep in touch with him and she was going to be there for him as much as she could with the understanding that I don't live here. I'm in college. So yeah. what I'm going to be able to do is not probably what you're going to need. And AJ is at the understanding that I hear you. Yeah, everybody, everybody it, say but that. Yeah, but it's easier you know, said than done. But you got to give some people some credit, AJ. Gigi said she was she wanted you home. She you came home. through. Yep. You know, so and I mean. You, and your sister came all the way from Hampton. To be with you and meet you. you. But and I understand. Get drunk. Like, 
<laughs> yeah. So I understand, you know, he been passed he been passed around and probably every, disappointed. every family probably that he had probably promised that they was gonna adopt him and take mm -hmm. care of him and this thing you know he come home and the social worker there to pick him up to take him to the next family. So Yeah. So <laughs> Sophia goes back to see Zora the weed explorer and Zora's down there doing a project because she was waiting for Sophia to help her with the project. She pissed. She don't even did the, what we do when we you looking for somebody. She don't call the ex boyfriend. The ex boyfriend was like, I ain't seen him. him. Zora smelled the alcohol on and said, and I know you a lie a little bit because he don't even drink. So where you been, but Zora, I mean, um, Sophia, she held her own. She yep. did not tell where she was. I thought she, she was though. I did too. Yeah. At least I thought she was gonna tell Zora. She didn't tell nobody else. So she ended up going to the big house, and she landed. Uh, ran into Lady May. And she told us, she said, Grandma, I'm on my way back to the airport. She was like, I didn't even know you were here. Mm -hmm. And you're on your way back to the airport. And then she realizes something is seriously going on between Gigi and Sophia. And she wants to know. And Gigi was like, this is between me and my mm -hmm. daughter. It, We're going to work it out. We're going to get through this. But Sophia told Gigi, listen, I'm not going to keep keeping your secret. I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back until you let the people know mm -hmm. that he here. And I'm not going to lie to them. But do you think Gigi's being hypocritical? She's hard on her mama because her mama won't tell the family that Lionel was her daddy. And now she's keeping her son from the family. So it's kind it's of... a generational curse. Yeah. So is, is that hypocritical of her to do that? I understand um, why she's doing what she's doing. Yeah. Because it's not... Because they're they trying to get the church back. And so if she bring that out... At the same time... She's doing all of this to still protect her family because at the end of the day, I'm not saying Gigi don't love that church, but at the end of the day, she don't give a fuck about keeping that church. Yeah, she, she doing didn't all want that, that church, yeah. So she's doing all of this and keeping secrets and hurting AJ, hurting Sophia. She's doing all of this as a sacrificial lamb for her goddamn family. Like, Once again. Like we said, said. But I would do good. But all the church, all them, and going back to Arizona. Take you, Sophia, <laughs> and AJ and get out of town. You and, ain't got to worry about nothing. And pick Charlie up. Oh, <laughs> Charlie from Queen Sugar pick yeah, her up. Pick her up. Yep. On the way, you can leave Michael because Michael doing his own thing. So, over there at Harmony and Hope, Bob Whitmore don't flew back into town. I can't stand Bob. And he meets with Gigi, and he's basically like, listen, there's a church called Fairview. They went from like 1,500 um, members um, a Sunday to like 200 members a Sunday. I need you to go over there and talk to Reverend Cal and see if you can convince him to merge his ministry with ours. Hmm. I said, okay. So Gigi took that information back to her mom and her dad. And he was like, no, no, no. This is about money. Mm -hmm. And it's about blending out churches. And he said, let me tell you something real good. When you start blending churches, it works. But it doesn't work for us. Yep. We are not ever the ones that's going to lead. Now, we follow a white pastor. Yep. But a white congregation will not be led by mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. He says, so if you let that happen and they come in and they infiltrate this ministry, you can best believe not near one mm -hmm. in this room mm -hmm. is going to be preaching on Sundays. Yep. I said, well, God doing. And, and I said, if, if that ain't the truth, and we know that for real. <clears throat> that's true. We had yeah. a... Um, a pastor that we were really cool with. He's a white guy. And, of course, white congregation. And they're Pentecostal. And we're Baptocostal. <laughs> and uh, we would have merged services with them. And those merged services would go off without a hitch when they led them. Yep. But anytime it was time for us to lead those services, yep. they wanted no parts of it. We would come and pack their church. And, and they would they, bring like five. They bring like four, five. With them. Every time. Yeah. And the pastor was the one who told us. He said, I want this, but my congregation does not. Yeah. And every time that man got a chance, he came to our church by himself. Yeah. I said, you might as well join. <laughs> yeah, you might as well. So they gonna I, shut down. Come on up over here. So it's very rare. I'm not going to say that it's not possible that it's not happening, but I can look out even in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. If there is a white pastor, there is a mixed congregation. But if there is a black, black pastor, pastor, that is a black church. Yeah. And you might have a, a, a few, few sprinkles. Three sprinkles, yeah. So Gigi goes over there and she talks to um <clears throat> to um Rabbit Cow. And Rabbit Cow was like, you know, I presented the idea to Bob that there are four to five churches in this area, some white churches, and maybe we can get together 
and you know build our churches up that way and he said he pretty much told me to get back on the paper she's like get back on the paper and he said get in my place yeah. And he said at the end of the day, he does pay our paychecks. He does do all that. I said, oh, so we really got a we, real slave driver uh -huh. that's driving everybody yep. right now. It's all about the business. All about the benchmarks, baby. So with that being said, Gigi knew that Reverend Cal, he's open, but this is not what, what he, he wants. What he want to do, yeah. I said, okay. So, of course, Gigi, you know, she knows in her mind what she needs to do. So she's trying to strategize on how to make this thing happen. And in the meanwhile, you see her mama having uh, having lunches with Bob Whitmore, mm -hmm. trying to get, trying to drive everything home, trying to do whatever they needed to do to make sure that whatever happens, we gonna be good at the end. Yep. So it came time for us to have the service, right? And. There was going to be a blending of the congregation on that Sunday so we could see how this thing goes. Epic failure. We started out with that stupid opening song. It's like what? That the Whitmore's daughter wrote. And of course, she had Charity up there singing it with her. And you know, black people, white people, we love each other. And, and we are so combined as a, as a... No, we're not really combined. But we get along well as as a group. But we don't like the same song. But, and we don't be on the same beat. Yeah. So this girl was singing on the one. And Charity was singing on the three. And, and it she, wasn't... And she hugging her like and this. And she kept... And you I know, said, I why guess, you keep got to touch yeah, her? Get off of her. Charity yeah. was like, get off of me, Mike. Let me sing. <laughs> Mama, I want to sing. So they got over that song and it just looked like, you know how it looked like on Easter Sunday morning when your mama beat you to go to church? That's how the whole congregation would look at people were laughing at the opening. <laughs> I, we done been we done been to some dry. When I say dry, I mean dry yes, church. Lord. This was below a dry church. <laughs> This I, dust. If, if I had a choice to go to there that Sunday in a dry church, I would just went to the dry church. I go to dry church. At, at least in the dry church, they got at least they got the lead guitar player and the and bass player that can give it to you. Yeah, at least you can get a shout in and make yeah, you feel uh -huh. better about going. Yeah, and then the quartet singers gonna they gonna give it to you. Don't but, do but, that. But but uh -uh. but but that right there. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gigi I, took the pulpit, y'all, and she started preaching, and she started preaching. And she started preaching about Moses and Pharaoh and all that good stuff. The Twelve and, tribes of Israel. And Bob was sitting there like, I ain't never, I ain't never heard it being spun around like that. Oh, hey, he was innovative. And then, and then Gigi started preaching about Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. And how when everybody thought that the people were going to separate, Pharaoh actually united the people because they had a common enemy. Yep. And she went and she drove that thing home and she said, we need to rise up and our life depends on it, all of this. And Bob knew that, that, that Gigi just bucked up the church's money. Yep. <laughs> she was preaching about him. She preaching about him and everybody in there caught it. Yep. And him and Phil DeMar was up there just <clears> sitting <throat> up there just as tight as they can be. And oh, peep this. Phil is a real errand boy, like a real yeah. trustee. Yeah. For real. Like he's, he's writing, writing sermons. his sermons. Yeah. And he will come back to him and tell him, that don't sound quite like me. You can just go ahead and um try it again. You know, I know you'll get it. That's a boy. What the fuck? We knew some people that <laughs> don't do We it. knew some people that used to go to the Bible bookstore and buy sermons and bring them jokers to church and preach. And you can tell it. Yeah. You can tell it. Yeah, if ain't no anointing, you can definitely tell it. Yeah. So, right after church, of course, Bishop, he was giddy. He was like, man, you preach, boy. Oh. And you told that such and such. And I said, yeah, in a few moments, you're going to get called the, in the, the office. The devil going to call you in the office. When you piss the devil off, he coming at you. Here come Phil. Um, Bob wants to see you in the office. In my He said, in she said, your office? Like, what? Bishop said, and Rochester shows up. I said, <laughs> so Gigi goes into the office, and he was like, first of freaking all, this ain't your church. Your paychecks are signed by um, Hustle oh, Headquarters. Uh -huh. The robes that you that you have, they're on loan, and everything that you love and are attached to are hanging on by your string right So your now. brother, your sister, your all y'all. It's all your fault. 
I said, here we go, blaming everything on Gigi go. again. Oh, I said, yeah. Mr. Bob Whitmore, did you forget that you said that you needed her to be there to keep the congregation there? And I thought he was going to tell her he knew about her child, but he didn't. Because I thought that was the next thing that came out of his mouth. And if you don't, then that son of yours that you're trying to hide will be a known thing. Because like, trust, trust me, if 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 he come through and and put D, and set DJ, I meant DJ, <laughs> DJ. Uh, GG out, all the rest of them black folk following right on behind Because the, the way they were looking doing that service, it was like I'm about sick of this little skin right here. Say say them say them say them black church mamas that came to church and they couldn't shout in their new hats, huh? And you already done insulted them. So yeah, many hats, so many hats. Like Bob, if you don't sit your like Chase, if you don't sit your god down. <laughs> so let's get on Carissa. Y'all know Carissa has been oh, having a hard one to sell this land, right? And they found a commercial buyer that wanted to buy the whole is it the Holtz? Is it the Holtz you want to buy that land? <laughs> but anyway, um <laughs> I would expect it that you <laughs> mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say what I want to say. For the comeback group? Yep, yeah, for the comeback group. So they sat down and had a meeting with the buyer, right? Because she don't beat poor Jacob down to the point where he was like, he told his dad that sometimes I just want to say yes to make her quiet. Yes, yeah, so get and some so peace. Get some peace. And now he wants peace and he said, we'll go ahead and sell this land. So they're having a meeting with the guy and the guy told him that they was going to build, what is it, a yoga studio? And yeah, and all what, that. Yeah. And the company was called, what is it, something on the hill? Yeah, yeah. It don't even matter, like Mike B said, it don't even matter. I knew it was some bullshit too. Yeah. So when they went to, um, you know, give him some celebratory um, wine or champagne or something, she noticed these cufflinks that he had on, and they were really nice. And she said, those cufflinks are really, really nice. You know, you know, may I ask where you got them from? And she was, and he was like, you know, he didn't ever really kind of say. Yeah, he just said it was custom made. But he kept saying yeah. that they were custom made, and he brushed the subject off. So later on, that day ago, Carissa ended up having a meeting with Phil DeMar about her school and all that good stuff. And when he went to reach out, she saw there was exact mm -hmm. same cufflinks. So she asked him, she was like, those are so nice. Where did you get those from? He said, oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, they oh. Harmony Hope. Um, yeah, they Harmony Hope, you know. I'm after, sorry, Hustle Headquarters. Yeah, Hustle Headquarters. After a while, you know, this is his thing, you know. And she was like, he said, hmm. yeah, he custom makes them. And she said, yeah, I wanted to know because I wanted to get Jacob a pair. I said, well, in time, he'll probably get a pair from him as well. So that's kind of like his badge of honor yeah. that he gives everybody that he's in cahoots with. So That was his branding. Yep. So Carissa calls <clears throat> the realtor, the agent, and she was like, can you find out who is funding this um, company that's trying to buy our land? She got back with her, and she was like, it's Hustle Headquarters. Then Carissa was like, I said... So, Carissa, what you gonna do? I was like, okay, so now that I know you can tell Jacob this is Hustle Headquarters trying to get this done, we're gonna renege on the deal. Yeah, and we're gonna just, you're just gonna we're have gonna to back suck it up and go back yeah. to the house. Well, we're sitting at the closing table, and I think Carissa has a thing for this guy, too, as well. Like, they've been locking eyes, and it's, it's something going on. Jacob signs, and then when he slides her the paper, she's looking at it. And you can tell she's battling with whether or not she needs to sign this or not. And she went on and she signed the papers. So do you know what you just did? I said, I hope to God that she signed, I will not sell. Or oh, Donald, Donald Duck. Duck. Sign on there because did you really just do this, Carissa? Yeah, especially knowing what these you people are trying, to, trying to do to your family's church. And trying to take it away. That's that's real day out to buy the land right across yeah. the street. Carissa is a piece of work, y'all. Yep. So she went ahead and she did so. So let's get on Miss Charity, because you know Miss Charity. When Bishop found out about that, boy, he gonna be pissed. Well, we saw next week it looked like uh Lady May yanked the hard parts up. And I'm the skin out of her too. And I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So charity. Early in the episode, Phil had told her, listen, you got to get me something. Because he know at this point that he's losing. And he's still under the impression that Gigi and F uh, Bob got some skit going on mm -hmm. behind his back that don't nobody else know about. So Charity is going around trying to pick, um, what's her name, Corinne, trying to figure out, you know, is there anybody in Gigi's life? First of all, you know, if I was, first of all, y'all talk too much. Yeah. Corinne tells way too much. Yes, yeah, she do. But second of freaking all, Corinne, you should have said, ain't that your sister? 
Go out and see yourself. And if you don't know, it's because she don't want you to know. Yeah. So, she did confirm that um, Noah had came into town, but she ain't know what he wanted, and he is married, so I'm quite sure it ain't no skit like that. And um, Rick Fox, he he's a thing of the past. So, this is what they got doing. Charity ended up doing. She ended up calling Noah, and I actually didn't even... I saw the harm in it, but I didn't think it was going to be as bad. Bad as it was. As yeah. it was. So she calls him and she left leaves a voicemail talking about some. How dare you come here and just left and you didn't even say hello. I don't get... And hung up. I said, okay. You know, she couldn't go through with whatever she was really trying to do. Yeah, because I thought Noah going to call back, you know, I'm sorry. And I just had to slide on in and slide on out. I'm good. That's what I thought was going to end up. But nah, my Well, come find out. Man. Next thing we know, Noah is calling Gigi. And he said, Isabella put me out the house. I was like, what? He said, because your sister called to the house and confirmed that when I was missing, I was down there. And she figured that I had met up with you. So mm -hmm. I had to come out and tell her that I had a son because I thought it would be better for her to know what I was down there for rather than her thinking that I was down there with you. He said, wrong move because now she going to put me out. Uh-huh. And she said, so what you going to do? He said, well, first of all, I'm moving back. So I get a relationship with my son. I was like, oh, Gigi, you got to tell it now. You definitely got to tell it. You got to tell it. Because <laughs> how y'all going to lie about Noah being back? And he like, got this son. And with a mom. Yeah, exactly. And Noah was like, Isabel's pissed. I got a whole son with you and I can't have no son with her. And then some people in the comments were saying they don't think that maybe Noah's, in, you know, that is his son or whatever. Because why can't he have children with um, Isabel? And I was like, it may not even be on him. You know, it could be, be on, on her. her. Yeah. So it is a lot going on. But I'm going to tell you what, these some drinking saints. I'm trying to tell Man, you. Man, it was a whole lot of brown looking flying through this episode, boy. Bishop had him up two glasses. Yep. Sophia had a glass. And I think AJ got a drinking problem. And then Noah, he at the bar, drinking his problems away. I said, mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Yep. We need to pray. Lord, we need to pray. Yeah, fast and pray. Uh, we need to go on Daniel fast. Yeah. <laughs> and that guy doing um, Reb Cow told got doing Bill. I mean, Bob, we're going to try to stick this. Yeah, we're going to stick it on out. They ain't coming over there to this black people church and not be led by no Gigi. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Nope. It ain't never going to happen. Nope. So it was a pretty good episode, but it's it's setting us up for the the wham bam. I said, Gigi, at this point, you just need to bring old AJ to the family dinner on Sunday evening after mm -hmm. church. Introduce him. Come out with it. Like I always say. Exactly. You tell it so that you can control your own narrative. Exactly. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Sue up, sue down. Holla. Yeah.